How is it going everybody? This is Gary here and also we have Jessica here today and this is going to be, well, it's going to be the first episode that you're going to get, not the first episode that we've done, but this is going to be the first episode that you're going to get and we are going to be talking about some true crime and not only true crime, but true crime, real stories that have been made into movies and also a TV series as well. And for our first episode, we want to focus on a German serial killer called Fritz Honka, who killed four women in Hamburg in the early 70s. Uh, there is a movie out there called The Golden Glove, and we're going to be talking about the movie and also the real case. And we also have two interviews from two of our German friends, both very different opinions, both from par different parts of Germany. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. What do you reckon, Jessica? Well, hello, hello. And yeah, I mean, we're going to be talking about some really serious matter here. So it's with all respect to the families because even if it's a movie we are going to dis be discussing, we have to remember that they are real people. This really happened. And, I mean, they were daughters, sisters, you know. And and this is, like, the, the thing more most important for us, doing it with respect. But, yeah, discussing some things... Um, technical stuff about the movie and making some comparisons with with you know the real case what we know because it's not um, a huge case or a long case in this in this case <laughs> um, but uh, what what has been made in history in this is how brutal how cruel he was and yeah. yeah evil shit so, like. mm -hmm. well we we are going to be discussing the movie first the golden glove as gary said and i mean <laughs> we, we are not going to to start talking about you know uh how true it is uh to the real events right now but technical stuff or, or or little things as a director uh, that Fatih uh, Akin did and yeah some some questionable decisions about the way he was you know telling the story. Um, I mean I don't I don't know you Gary but well the first thing was <laughs> in the fifth in the in the first five minutes. I saw that he didn't indeed that that part where you know he's trying to undress a body of a woman he killed ah uh, yes and, yes. <laughs> and the body starts helping him to undress her I mean it's just really obvious and and, and I think that is a huge error in addition that and was it Jessica even... sent me the she sent me the the video going you know, it's a pretty graphic scene. You know, it doesn't take away from the uneasiness of this actual scene. But she sent me a, a little short video saying, did this body just help him get undressed? And I looked at it going, holy fucking shit, it did. She lifted its arm. She lifted her arm saying, come on, the fuck, would you hurry up? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, yeah it was, and it then, was a, an error for sure. Yeah, and then you can see how... She tries to position it them again like it's a lifeless body, but it's just really obvious. And it was okay. Well, that, that that's the first thing that it it hurt me. The second mm -hmm. was the the whole American Beauty thing that he did with the with yes. the girl in in the, the movie. <laughs> yeah, he 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 gets infatuated with a girl that he just saw outside of a, I think it's a cafeteria, a cafeteria or something like that. And uh, she was drinking uh, um, coke, I think, and wanted to to start smoking. So obviously he, the gentleman, offers some some light, and 
second X, we are seeing this girl in his imagination covered in, in raw meat and biting the meat. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a very said, it's like sexy American way. Beauty, only. It's, it's like American Beauty, only instead of like rose petals falling on uh, a naked body, it's fucking Fritz Honka imagining this blonde girl covered in blood <laughs> blood and eating lumps of raw meat ah yeah that was in a very sexual way because in a very sexual mm. way so as jessica said like it's um that was just obviously made up for the movie and jessica's mentioned it a few times that it's it's definitely it wasn't a good choice and i i do have to agree there thinking yeah it was completely unnecessary yeah, I mean, I I understand that the, the narrative he was trying to this, depict, like he's a pervert and everything. Um, but I don't think that that actually helps to to build a character, and and that that's the other thing that irked me, the other characters. I mean, just with one glimpse, you can see what kind of people goes to the bar you don't you don't really need to go really into like like deep into them to figure out what kind of people they are you know it's just blatantly obvious and even there's a scene where the bartender is um telling a, a boy the boy that, that wants something with said girl you know the, the girl we were talking about and tries to impress her by going to this bar. <laughs> and yeah, the bartender starts telling the story of each one of them and the nicknames and everything. So I don't know, those fillers kind of between bore me and I didn't see the point of it because we already know. Yeah, they, they are the low of the lowest. They are just like nasty people. Uh, the depressed people or I don't know how you want to put it and obviously this mm -hmm, uh, this narrative with with these characters and then having the boy uh, trying to to get the girl as a side story in the same bar and getting like bullied by the people in the bar I don't I don't I mean, is the story of Fritz Honka? Why do I care about this kid? And, and if we already established what kind of people is in the bar, why I need this? I, I, I don't see the point of those feelers. It, 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 to me, it feels more um, like trying to feel the, <laughs> the amount of time you promise that you are going to, to make the movie, you know? It, it felt more like that than, than just giving something about the movie. And that is a shame. Oh, well, in my point of view, that is just a shame because it rests impact in in the way you tr you are trying to portray him by just putting these side stories. Like, it, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, it, it didn't work for me. It didn't work mm -hmm. for me in that way. Like Jessica um, said, there was uh, the bar... You know, you only have to look at the customers in this bar to realize th th who they are, what they are. And yeah, there's a lot of stupid, pointless characters. But the bar in itself is like a huge character as well in the movie. And that's it, you know, because that's where he picked up all these girls. And as Jessica said, it's like they're depressed. Um, they're uh, alcoholics. They're jobless. Um desperate and it's fucking it they're really really sad characters so yeah if you if there was these little pointless fucking stories that just went absolutely nowhere and they could have just focused on the actual crimes that took place with the actual girls that they picked up from the bar i think you know it would have been a lot better but as you say i think that's a good that's a good analysis there saying that he just had time to fill it's like fuck we need to make 15 minutes so Let's just shoot some fucking side shit. Yeah, the whole narrative with this, I mean, I get it. At the end, 
I mean, it's not like a really spoiler <laughs> because I'm, if you know he killed four women that mostly were prostitutes and old women. Uh, so this girl, it doesn't fit in that, you know, profile. So as you can imagine, uh, obviously yeah, he didn't kill her. So at the end, it looks like he's finally going to get her, but then the reality comes and bites his ass. And and it's like, oh my God, I have her so close, but at the same time, it was so far of me. You know, I'm, I'm guessing they tried to do this poetic finale with that, but... Uh, Again, it didn't work for me because it looked more like funny. Because after that, then a bunch of cops come for him and he's trying to escape. And it, it looks just like a sketch, like a gag, something funny. It's, it's, instead of, I don't know, some sort of poetic justice or I don't know what what, what try to. So that, that really didn't set well with me because I, I just really wanted a depiction of, of more of the reality, how things happen, how he was more um, cold uh, when when he got captured, and and not this just you know, like like a joke, like the the, the end of a of a comic uh, a comedy episode or something like that. That 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 didn't that didn't sit well with me. But hey, that's just me. <laughs> that's my opinion. Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, now that I just took out of uh, the bad stuff, in my personal opinion, very, very, very personal opinion, um, I want to talk about the good stuff that I found in the movie. Um, it's, it's filmed in a way that actually makes you feel that you are fi you are living or seeing the story uh, in the correct year because it uh, the, the colors and and the it makes you feel that depression you know it makes you feel like you are in that um, hopeless place in that era where uh, most people were feeling like you know hopeless and I think he did an amazing job with that the scenography well not the scenography sorry the cinematography and yeah the places and everything um, I think he did he he really captured that that feeling um, I really really like and that's just entering the territory of what is true, what is just me true, or what was just, you know, for the movie. In this case, uh, the, he took some real elements, obviously. And what it really impresses me uh, is how pretty much he did a carbon copy of the flat of Fritz Honka. Because if you see... The photos of, of the actual apartment and the photos of the apartment in the movie it looks just like the same it's crazy how accurate it yeah. oh yeah I'm a creepy as fuck if you walked into that apartment I don't care what, who you are what you are if you walked into that apartment you would be just doing a fucking 180 and you'd be straight out the fucking door again is it a 180 place. where you just turn around <laughs> I don't know I was about to say 360 but you'd still be in his apartment if you'd done that yeah so a 180 yeah and you'd be out the Here's, door because this apartment it is, is absolutely fucking it's you know the magic mm -hmm. it, it, isn't that we were talking about that we were talking about the whole fucking magic tree they had loads of magic trees and who else had magic trees in a fucking serial killer movie in the 1990s uh, 90, 97 maybe 99 uh, 7 did 
that scene where they fucking they go into the room and the guy's lying there and he's he, he's still alive but they've got the magic trees so that's where fincher yeah if because wrote if that you see the photos the mag- uh, of the findings he doesn't have those. What he has is a lot of, of sprays, like like deodorant sprays. Because yeah, he was obsessed with the <laughs> with the smell. I mean, I could say it too. Um But yeah, the the, the apartment is just really accurate and not um just you have an idea if you, you are not really familiar with the case. Um, all the walls are covered with with nudes, like for magazines, like you know, some sort of Playboy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, yes. Sets of tatas, sets of titties everywhere, topless girls. But that's like you know, that's okay. Fuck it, well, that's not okay, really, to have that as your main decor mm-hmm. in your apartment, you know, thinking that that's okay, I'm just going to put these beautiful pictures up on the wall here. Uh, dolls. It, but, but yeah, not we the were talking dolls about you will... as well, what else he has in that fucking yes. room. Yes, no, but not the dolls that you will, you know, the creepy buy for those purposes, dolls. but they look like, you know, dolls, like... <laughs> Well, <laughs> what dolls do you buy for what purposes? <laughs> well, I well, I'm what I'm a girl, so I don't purposes? need dolls. <laughs> <laughs> not not dolls per se, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. th- these are the kind of, okay. of of dolls that you will find <laughs> in 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 really creepy Mexican horror movies. We have one, by the way, and I, I will recommend it <laughs> because they are like porcelain and they look, they, they are like vintage. They look creepy as fuck. I don't even know why, why he will use them because, I mean, making a comparison with, with um, some documentaries that I saw, they will, they, they say that he, he, I mean, he had a problem with, <clears throat> Um, yes. <laughs> they don't want to be that. <laughs> Getting it up. Just, just well, come but, straight out. Just come but straight if out YouTube with gets sang red out, it's, it's on you. This is 18 certificates, you know what I mean? <laughs> Couldn't get well, it up. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we'll just put beep. on a fucking beep. Well, in this beep, Couldn't get uh, beep. The, Couldn't get he wasn't beep. able to get fulfill his... um man who desires <laughs> <laughs> well it, it, it was it, in this case i think Sexual it was all desires. about his manhood that's why he killed <laughs> this poor woman i don't know it's just so well we will we'll, we'll enter in that later but yeah according to some documentaries he will finish those business with the dolls I, i'm i'm just you know, it, they are just freaking dolls that you will, yeah. you know, buy for your children. <laughs> they're not, they're not just fucking, they're not freaking dolls. They're like fucking, they're like, vic- they're freaky as fuck dolls. Do you know what yes. I mean? They're not normal yes. dolls. They've got like Victorian clothes and shit on. They're like, like you know. Annabelle and all that mm-hmm. there shit it would not even have a look at them they're fucking they're way creepier so and I, I think that's I got a lot to mm-hmm. do with like how he or the reason that you know he took these people home and he goes listen I'm going to fuck you and then he's like I can't get it up because you're moving so I'm going to fucking I'm going to kill you and then you're not going to move and you're just going to be like one of my little fucking dolls Boom. <laughs> There's a fucking well, psychological that is analysis much what there. Funding, Free of charge. Really like doing, like, you, you know, fake that you are dead and stuff like that. So, but yeah, well, the, 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 this case is really different. But uh, let's finish only. with the movie first. Um, I understand what German uh, journalists were saying about that uh, he just i mean 
this movie is based on a book uh, that a journalist made and they were saying that that fatigue in this case just made it more uh, fantabulous, you know, just just for the for the kicks and and those things, just to make it more more nasty and more more you know everything in that way. So that 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 was uh, not that faithful. In, in, in that way that, that it was making some sort of justice to the book. Um I mean I I won't go say about that because I, I think there's a lot of things that get lost in translation. So what we know that is in English <laughs> um I kinda agree to a certain level for example, if you enter seeing this movie, you're going to be so freaking disgusted by everything, especially the apartment. It just makes you feel like you really need a shower after finishing that movie. It's It is fucking horrible. And if Jessica's saying that, she watches a lot more fucking worse stuff than me, then you know that this yeah. is... An, it is fucking nasty. It is beautifully nasty. Uh, but yet yeah, you would, you'll you be fucking trying to wash your skin with exfoliated soap. They rip off your fucking skin as you're showering mm. because it, you'll feel that grimy. You'll be like, what have I just put myself through? <laughs> and yeah. then... It does that awesome thing. It's like it just yeah, sticks I, in your I fucking just, head for days. I was just waiting like, for a cockroach or something to, awesome. to appear in the middle of the, you know, <laughs> in the act. <laughs> because, I mean, that, that's the first thing you see. Like, he's constantly trying to have sex with, you know, anything that moves. So he keeps bringing this woman to the apartment. And I understand that they were in a very bad situation. So I'm not going to judge them because, I mean, all of them, the first thing were like, what is just that smell that is just, you know, horrible. And he was always blaming um, the Greeks because he had some neighbors that were Greeks. Yeah. Uh, in reality, um, the police say that yeah, it was kind of racist, but not only him, like the whole community. And they didn't specify if they were Greeks or not. They only um, talk about them as foreigners. There was a lot of foreigners that were always complaining about the smell and trying to get involved. The police, the, the, the you know, hygienic department, like health department, everybody. But nobody listened to them because, oh, they are foreigners. So they could have stopped this very early, but they didn't because they were foreigners. Like uh, that is, <sighs> it leaves you thinking a lot about that. Well, and I mean, after the first time, the first time, yeah, it's, it's really rough to see because uh, I don't know. We see a lot of fucked up movies, and I mean a lot. So it wasn't the, the actual killings of, of the stuff that the way it was portrayed because at some extent it wasn't as graphic as it could have been for the way he, he, Fritz Honga killed the woman. So it is not that graphic, but with the hygiene and, and, and making him physically nasty. Yes. I think he he, he managed that well to make you feel Repulsive. just like you. Like like if I see uh, um what is the name of the actor? Jane Jonas Dassler, thank you. If I see Jonas Dassler in, in this uh, Jonas Dassler. characterization I don't even, it doesn't even to be like the middle of the night, just at, 
<laughs> at noon, if I see him walking towards me, I I would change. <laughs> I will be like, fuck this shit, bye. And I will go there, you know, <laughs> go back to my house. Yeah. He is a fucking, it's like, yeah, he's absolutely repulsive. And I have to say that supposedly, I cannot confirm this 100%, but the lead actor who played uh, Fritz Honka in The Golden Glove uh, was 19 at the time. Um, it was also his first f film role. I'm not sure if it was his first film appearance, but it's, he wanted to get into film. And he was doing a stage play. And Fatih, the director and writer of The Golden Glove, was at this stage play with his wife. And apparently his wife just fucking turned to Fatih and says, listen, there's your Joan, there's your Fritz Honka. And she, Fatih was like, what? And that the rest is history. Like, he's like a real fucking... Like, he, the makeup is just astounding. Like, how nasty and repulsive they make him look from what he actually looks like. You know, he's like he's a good looking chap sort of like Robert Pattinson and he really embodied this character and they made him nasty looking and he took the whole fucking nastiness the fucking everything to, to suit that <laughs> character so, yeah I so mean perfectly. after uh, yeah sure uh, the, the first impact that is you know watching the movie for the first time that it makes you feel like you you know I, I always joke about the, the Mufasa feeling, you know, in The Lion King with the hyenas that are like, Mufasa, boo. <laughs> yes, well, oh, yeah. it was the Mufasa that's feeling. A that's a genuine it was like, feeling. Ooh. That's a genuine feeling. <laughs> like that. It, it's, oh, disgusting. Well, then you see it again and you think, well, I mean, it's not as bad as the first time. I guess you are just mentally prepared that you are going to be seeing this nasty place with nasty people and everything is just ugh <laughs> in general. So I guess it, it is, you, you can pay attention to more details in the story and well, that helps. Um, so that's the other thing about him like I understand why he he tried to make him look like that like like a dude that you don't want to cross paths with um, and then you see the actual Fritz Honka and that's the dangerous thing because he looks like anybody's neighbor he doesn't look that bad I mean it, Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But he seems mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. That, it, yes, and, and that's the, that's the thing with the real Fritz Honka because he looks like a regular guy that obviously, uh, not, I don't want to say like physically or aesthetically, but you know what I mean. Uh, has some, not impediments, but uh, struggles with women in general. And uh, that's another difference in the movie. In the movie, di since the very beginning, they, they, the director is trying to implant in, you, implant in your brain that he's just... the Oh, oh, ugliest, awful guy you're going to find in the world, and he invites girls drinks, and then they they tell that they tell him in in his face like, oh no, you're so ugly, oh no, you know, 
I guess it's it's a way to try to 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 make him like that's why he has that anger, you know, building inside of him because everybody treats him like that. And in reality, it wasn't like that. Um, the owner of the bar was saying that um, he often invite women drinks. That's as correct. But he he always uh, tell them uh, to the bartenders to don't say that it was from him. He just wanted to make them, you know, get really, really drunk. So when they got like really, really drunk, they will he will approach them. So you know that that part doesn't. I mean, I understand why he did it in the movie. I understand that that you are going to be bombarded with this, like how awful he is, how nasty he is, how ugly he is. I understand that part, but I think it was just so over the top and it was just, you know, exaggerated. And you you don't you don't really need everybody telling you like, oh, he's just like an ugly muffle, you know? <laughs> we already are seeing it. <laughs> yeah, there's that yeah, there's that, and like you know, there's the other, the other side of that. You know, th- I could sort of really respect mm-hmm. that they made him ugly as fuck. You know, because they, they, when you mentioned like Ted Bundy earlier on, you know, when there's a movie about Ted Bundy, it's like all the fucking girls will go into the chapel and well, you know what I mean. Everybody's lining up to get married with the motherfucker, and it's such a, mm-hmm. it's such a glorification of such a fucking evil motherfucker. You know, and so. Yeah, I'm sort of like yeah. If this guy is not glorified in any way, he is like dehumanized. If he had, if he had any sort of fucking, you know, human behavior in him, he is completely dehumanized, and and he's made him a completely Definitely. greasy, fucking repulsive, Definitely. hideous um, human being, like monster, monster. <laughs> and if it was Ted Bundy, you'd have fucking loads of people lining up just to get married yeah. with him. Get you know. And get married in prison with them, you know. Yeah. Like, so like yeah, like... fuck American serial killers. Yeah, I mean, it is still happen. It just happened like what Sexy a month bastards. ago. I think I told you that a girl from UK flew to marry a serial killer in Arizona. I think. So yeah, that happens. Yeah, it's ah Jesus, fucking doesn't surprise me. Like what in the name of fuck? Like seriously? Like what? The like, Jesus Christ! Like they should be just taken at, off the plane and put in hospital, saying, "What in the fucking right mind are you doing, you stupid fucking bitch?" Seriously, going to a, going to a fucking prison to fucking marry a serial killer? Well, now you know how <laughs> to make Gary angry. She's obviously Gary looking for a Netflix fucking seconds. documentary. That's what it is. <laughs> Not, it's not good. But what if the serial killer gets out? Like, and then you have I to know. take the serial well, killer and no, I'm, I, I, well, meet your I'm, parents. We, we are just going out of the, oh, the topic. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, she <laughs> said, she she lied to, to her parents. She said that she was going to Disneyland or something like that. Oh, yeah. Such Maybe a good Disneyland. Disneyland. <laughs> that is like, that's yeah. the worst thing you could say. I'm going to Disneyland of all fucking places. I'm going to a fucking Club yeah, in I, 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 yeah, I think he, she's. I mean, they didn't know where she was actually going in general. You know, she only said that she was in holiday at thing, and then she will go to Disneyland or something like that. But Jesus yeah, cra- crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy shit. Crazy. They so, exist. They fucking exist. So yeah. So they, I think they congratulations to the, the director for making. Fritz Honka a repulsive motherfucker mm-hmm. because he done repulsive fucking things and his character yeah. suits the fucking th- the crimes that he commits yeah um that's the thing I, I um he had a good job that is not the spike the packed in the movie but he had a good job and that's why he was able to invite uh everybody a drink because he was a heavy drinker, like really, really into drinking. In and the snaps, that's why always the snaps, Berliner. He locked. got, he got divorced two times, twice, and and yeah, I mean, 
no wonder why. Every time he got like really, really drunk, uh, he would transform and be really aggressive toward women. I'm guessing that is part of his um, problems, issues, problems with abad abandonment mm, because of her, of his mom. And yeah, I mean, just to clarify, I'm not justifying anything he did because you can't possibly justify what he did. But you have to look the big. The, the bigger picture here, you have to find, to try to understand why, why he did what he did, but it's not justifying what he did. I mean, for, I, I, I don't even agree with, with the sentence he got. Um, but yeah, that's, that's for later. So I'm guessing that it, that was the, the biggest issue he had with abandonment. Uh, problems. Um, I mean, two divorces, not of his siblings. I think he he only had contact with one of his his brothers, and he had ten no, siblings. Yeah, no mom, no dad, no nor anybody. So, and the whole depression thing with we you know with you know the country going through to that phase of trying to to get back in track and the economy failing you know there, there are a lot of things and um yeah so he's having so much problems with the drinking and he gets really angry when when he drinks in the movie they despite that um when he gets like this this job that is better he cut off the drinks and start, you know, trying to get a better life and, and redeem himself. And that's the reason they give, uh, because between the first murder and the second, it, it was like four years, I think. Uh, the, the, uh, yeah, what happened. And supposedly in the movie, he, he gets rehabilitated and, and then, you know, he's working hard and and being a good man but then he kind of falls in love with one of his co-workers as usual and she's always drinking because the husband is an alcoholic and she's having problems with him and she keeps offering him alcohol so yeah at some point he starts drinking again trying to impress her and everything goes to fucking hell again. In reality, um, people don't really know what happened. They speculate that uh, he was kind of not controlled, but just drinking normally, like, like his normal amount of, of drinking. And then he started drinking more and more and more and more. And when he starts spiraling out of control is when he commits the second healing. But not because he, he gave up the drinking. No, he already had that job. He already was paying everybody's drinks. That's why everybody liked him because he was always giving, it, giving them drinks for free. I guess in a way he was just buying affection to put it in that way. And most of them, yeah, they were prostitutes. Um, he Wrong had a hairdresser. thing. Yeah, she she was hairdresser and part prostitute. Like, yeah. And he will go for toothless woman because he was like really, really afraid of, you know, one of them. Kidneys. No, but no. <laughs> yeah, because he really enjoyed the uh, oral sex. He really, really preferred oral sex over, um, you know. The <laughs> I don't know how to say it in a in a very polite way. <laughs> nah, you're, you're fucking, you're gonna you're gonna get me banned from YouTube now because I'm gonna be just 
<laughs> Shite and all this. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm, I'm strolling. But you know, like like normal... The full shebang. The full shebang. <laughs> yeah. Coitus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he prefer oral sex. And that's why he had this fear about, you know, woman biting his <clears throat> manhood off. And <laughs> yeah, so he preferred toothless woman. That's, you know, that that's the thing we don't see in the movie because in the movie, as, as we mentioned, he goes with this really young girl and yeah, no. And I mean, what most people, the journalists of back in the day and psychiatrists um, were discussing in, in numerous documentaries I have, I have seen is that um, it is it, it was just as a killer for opportunity is he he didn't actually mean to kill these people I know it sounds like you're trying to justify him but it's not I mean, I understand why they are saying that because he was just, you know, careless. He didn't give a shit what to do with the bodies. He 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 had girlfriends, and and there were he he had encounters with other women that are still alive, uh, or were still alive. I don't know, but they they he didn't kill them so why specifically those four and it was just like an, an opportunity it, it was just in the moment it was like that he didn't think he didn't anything and I think that is what actually makes someone very dangerous more than having like a profile because a profile if you're blonde and he likes blondes you're fucked but if you're brunette, fine. But when you have someone that doesn't have that in mind that I'm just going to go for this and I'm going to torture her in this and that and blah, blah, blah. You only take the opportunity in that moment, in the spire of the moment, and do it. I mean, you, you don't even feel the danger. Because that's the thing. Women will, will keep going to his apartment. None of none of them felt in danger with him. Mm -hmm. That's what he makes him dangerous in that way. Yeah, so, I think he's a fucking a very very sick dude. Like, and you know where you get as you say, like you get people with profiles and routines, and like they're killing for they're killing for fucking. The thrill of the kill and for media attention where this dude killed these people um, and chopped up their bodies and mm -hmm. put them in his cupboard like he didn't try and dispose of anything what sort of human being in the right mind would like chop chop people up after like really really um, really sexually fucking assaulting them raping them killing them sawing off their bodies, putting them in these little closed spaces and just going about his business. Like, you know, the smell must have been absolutely fucking horrendous. And so I think this guy doesn't belong in jail. Or he didn't belong in jail. He belonged in a fucking padded cell for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That That's the, the, the whole thing with him. I mean... I'm not going to say that it was just because of the alcohol. I'm just going to say that he already was a ticking bomb. And the alcohol was just like the extra light <laughs> uh, to put it away because uh, it's not even full. It's just the extra dynamite if you want to put it in a way uh, that helped to, to that thing to, to explode sooner than it should be and but he was already 
having a lot of injury issues. And sadly, this woman got him in, in one of those episodes of, of race she had. Um, what I get... <laughs> I don't want to say that it was funny, but I it's funny as a statement, but it's not funny for, you know, real life. But one of the police say that um, he didn't think that he was like that kind of serial killer or anything. He was just a freaking lazy, alcoholic piece of shit that, you know, it was lazy. So that's why he got caught because he was fucking lazy. He he didn't even want to try to get right of the corpus. So he was just like a He did freaking... he did load the the first body, didn't he? The he first. disposed of the first body. Not you completely. Know. Not completely. Still, Some yeah. parts. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, I don't even he, know why he... I'm laughing. That's horrible, but you know, what a fucking guy. Seriously. What a guy. Well, I, I think for people that doesn't know us, we kind of laugh in, in awkward situations and where we are nervous about something. So it's not like a laugh about, you know, trying to be rude nor anything. Definitely and I, I say that, rude. Yeah, no. It's just that sometimes you are in such disbelief <laughs> that you that your your natural reaction is like, fucking hell, you know, that, that little laugh. So just to clarify that. Yeah. Um. We tend to do that because I, I, I tend to do that too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he didn't got like right of all the parts of the first woman. That's why they, will, they were uh, able to identify the, one of the bodies because when, when he found out about, they found out about the other bodies, um, they didn't know about the other three, like, like, it was just freaking impossible. So they literally took the clothes because he had the clothes. And, and that's one of the things that most people argue about that. Oh, no, he was just keeping these uh, trophies like all the serial killers because he has um, the clothes and, 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 you know, the body parts and everything. And that's why one of the police officers says, I don't think he was like that kind of serial killer. He was just fucking lazy. He wasn't a, a drunk piece of shit that was lazy lazy as fuck so that's why he kept everything because why why he will try to you know get rid of those things so they literally grabbed the clothes and were going to the bars because he he visits three bars always uh, but the most well known now is is the golden globe so they will go to the bars and ask with the clothes like and the shoes and everything have you seen any of the people that comes here like that they are regulars with these clothes and that's the way they, they were able to find the, the woman that is so sad that is incredible sad like not even a, a, a missing person report not even like hey yeah I think I haven't seen this you know regular here no it's like Nobody care. If it wasn't for for the fire, in in his apartment, they wouldn't even find that. You know, four women were killed. That's horrible. It's just horrible to think about that. Yeah. Um, horrible death, and then a horrible way of, I guess, being put to rest and finding. Yeah, it's, it's just it's incredibly sad. Yeah, um, the four um, uh, sex workers <laughs> uh, that he killed. Um, <sighs> the first one uh, that was the, the, the hairdresser part um, prostitute, I think he killed her because he said she didn't, she didn't want to have sex with him. So he got angry and just killed her. The second one, the excuse he gave was that she wasn't patient enough while they were having sex. That 
that's just uh, I don't even have words words to describe that the third one I, I I think he didn't say anything about that one I think he just said that he strangled her I, I guess he was just too drunk and angry and because other former girlfriends testified that um, he will have these episodes where, where they were having sex and he was pretty drunk he will get really angry and they will um, I don't know if we can say the word but I'm, I'm going to shoot my shoot uh, rape them with the sticks of brooms or whatever he had so they they even have um, scars of those things so yeah and and I guess it was just in the spirit of the moment with the one that he strangled that because he didn't give any reason and the fourth one um, I think he said that she loud at him uh, he loved it loved it <laughs> laughed <laughs> laughed I'm laughed sorry you got it you got it thank you <laughs> she laughed uh, because um, he preferred oral sex so yeah she was just being kind of you know that kind of girl so yeah he got angry um uh, this is a, the, the 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 part that I don't even get the four bodies three of them he he cut them in the small pieces and and grabbed them and then some he hide them uh, between the walls and others in the in the bathroom but he had a mummified body a mummified body in the bathroom how on freaking earth you can have a mummified body in your bathroom and nobody notice anything? Imagine going in and doing your business in the bathroom just with a mummified body there all the time. That is not the fucking that is not the, the actions of a sane fucking man for sure. But as that's well why it's they... not that's fucking demummified, that must take fucking serious shit they mummify someone really wouldn't it like a lot of like mm -hmm. you'd have to know what you're doing so that if you know what you're doing you'd be in your right mind because you're doing something so fucking so precise mm -hmm. and so different you know but no he was fucked up because he'd have to take a shit next day a fucking mummified corpse every day exactly and, and i mean i mean i uh, can't remember it was above or under the the, the mummified body but it was a torso. So not even you have a mummified body, you have a torso there too. And you don't even flinch. And you keep bringing women. Like, <laughs> what, like you keep like, bringing... I'm, not, I'm just I'm laughing again, dear, but I'm not laughing. It's just like, yeah, what in the name of fuck these women would have... The, the, the amount of alcohol that they're drinking, it is inevitable that they would have to go to the toilet. Did he say mm. you have to piss in a pot? You know, or, you know, piss before you go because my toilet's broke? You know? Yeah. I know. It, it's just the. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the little laugh you, you're hearing is just disbelief. We are in disbelief. Like, how on earth? You, you can have, like, Pretty much two bodies and, and several pieces in the bathroom, and you keep bringing a woman to your apartment to have sex with them, and they are okay with that. Like, <laughs> maybe they're just so fucking drunk that they don't know what the fuck they're seeing by the time that they actually get to his apartment, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, you heard like if you see something like that in the bathtub. And mm -hmm. it'll be one of those things. Oh, what's in the bathtub? Oh, mummified torso. You go, ha ha, <laughs> nice one, Fritz. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, it is. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you will be like, oh, a bit early for for Halloween decorations, you know? 
Yeah. I, I, I would be like that because I couldn't believe that's the thing. Nobody could believe that him did that. When the police officers were going to the bar and telling people he killed woman, he killed this woman, they were like, what? Him? Him did that? It's just everybody was in disbelief because these people knew him. And they, won't, they couldn't believe that. So... The whole, I mean, if you see the photos, the actual photos when, when they got like uh, everything, and, and that's part of, of the reason why why he got caught. Um, the 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 fire workers, the, the firefighters, um, at what they say, they are trained to smell corpses because that's part of their work every time they have to go and ex extinguish you know fires and everything they know how a dead boy smells so when they were trying to control the fire on the apartment they got that smell so they told that somebody was there and died so they were trying to get to to that uh part of the apartment well it was the attic but yeah apartment and then they found the bodies and the pieces and everything i mean you you and even at the end of the movie they, they show you a little map uh where the bodies were found and 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 they explain everything about that but it was because of they were trained for that they, they were you know they know about those smells if they they didn't. They, they probably didn't won't have found those bodies. So when they are taking, obviously, a lot of photos of all the evidence, that's when we see the, the you know, the apartment with the porn and the and the dolls and and the deodorant, deodorants and and so much alcohol. I'm not even joking. It's just so much alcohol. So many bottles you will think that the dude has like a freaking store or something and because of that because of that problem with the drinking he had sorry it 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 helped him it helped him in the case because they took it like he wasn't thinking straight he he was just influenced by the alcohol so he only got 15 years 15 years and not even in the jail in a psychiatric hospital so and i mean i i, I understand that part the dude needed help yes definitely he needed help um but 15 years, I don't know, I will be worried, you know, for him to be out in 15 years because he will still have, like, a good age and, and he could keep doing the same things, mm -hmm. you know? 100%. This guy shouldn't be see the light of day again. He should be locked up mm -hmm. and put in a psychiatric unit and kept there for the rest of his days. Mm-hmm. I mean, because of that, uh, it's just like the alcohol. I think that that's a fine line that you shouldn't cross. Like just saying that because of the alcohol, the abuse of ab alcohol, uh, it, it diminishes mental capacity. And it's a mitigating factor, so he won't get, you know, all the... the, the, the um, murders like like in your sentence i think he only got one counting as an actual murder and the other three as manslaughter and that's why he only got 15 years it's, it's just I, yeah. not the nine he needed help not the nine because he really needed help he really was freaking screaming for help um 
but I don't I don't see him fair for his victims to be honest and I mean after that he gets released he had the opportunity to change his name so nobody knows who the fuck he is and get into a nursing home and die because yeah he uh, at the end of the day he died um i don't know like like five years after he got released i think but it's still yeah he, he got, he got, it got too released. easy yeah fucking hell yeah, man. Yeah. It, it, um, crazy justice system mm-hmm uh but yeah well i don't know what everybody thinks but our two cents are that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah, definitely bullshit. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus, you could still go to this. Um, you can go to this bar still today. It is actually still open in Hamburg, and they are sort of capitalizing a little bit, I guess, on it. You know, if the I think you can go out buy like Fritz Honka memorabilia and stuff if you're one of those like morbid serial killer people that like visiting the actual places oh, yeah. where the crimes nearly occurred yeah I mean that that's still the, the other is, is stuff that we didn't talk about at the end of the day even if the guy was screaming for help and everything and everybody was like oh we were so fond of him we like him because he was always you know giving money at the end of the day, the owners of of, uh, of the bar and everybody was just there for the money. He didn't actually care about the guy. And and I remember a part of the movie that I actually like. Um, the the little dude <laughs> that that was trying to impress the girl asked one of the bartenders why all the windows are closed. And the bartender says, because it's, uh, you have light outside. And if they see that it's daylight, they are going to stop drinking and trying to do something. So, you know, that's how yeah. much <laughs> important Horrible. to keep them being drunk. So... Yeah, and and I mean when he they try they're trying to talk to another guy that is just you know pass out on the chair, uh, he threw at him I think some nuts, and everybody was like why why are you being so rude and he said no it's just that I I have to check on on all of you every couple of hours because last time we didn't notice that we have a body here for three days. We just thought that he just. You know, was too drunk and yeah, we didn't even notice that he was dead. It's a nice pull. <laughs> Super nice. Fuck. Yeah. Yes. So well, <sighs> the, yeah, like movie the pub is, is that horrible. The pub is that horrible that it can have a corpse mm. actually, literally lying there for three days and <laughs> no one knows. Laughing again, it shouldn't be, but yeah. Sorry, you're gonna say where it's available, is it? Yeah, the movie yeah. where you can watch it if you are um, curious. To you know, give it a shot. I mean, if you see in a very fictional way, I think, and you are into true crime, I think this is a must for you. Um, I I mean, yeah, the the things that irked me or or didn't set well with me you know that's my particular taste yeah it it couldn't bother you so it's available on google play voodoo and amazon but i think it's only in the u.s i'm not really sure but they are available for buy or rent so yeah go and check it if you are interested I mean, the director has interesting movies in general. So this this was a bold choice uh, for what we know that we are going to be entering now to the... Um, I brought uh, a couple of questions um, 
just to have a better idea or feeling about this case in you know actual Germany because we are going to perceive this every case differently um, for example you know if you are in in America I mean the continent uh, is very different uh, serial killers are are like rock stars and I'm ashamed to admit that because that's the same with narcos that's the same with you know that kind of people they are treated and they are portrayed they are portrayed on series docu series movies soap operas whatever the fuck you want to call it as freaking rock stars as they are like wow and I, I, I will never understand that culture I mean, I'm part of this culture and I don't understand it. And so we have a, a, a very different sense about it. Um, I think is we are more morbid in that way because a lot of YouTubers uh, and, and, you know, people into true crime that has now, you know, podcasts and, and, and channels and everything are from this side of the world. And, and they are very popular and, and I think it's because of that because this is a morbid culture so I was really interested to see if in Germany is this same phenomenon because in documentaries they say that this is really weird like like these things doesn't really happen there and when something like this happens it's just like oh you know um, so yeah, the questions are mostly about, you know, the culture and, and this case in particular, how it affects the culture or, you know, just general, generally. Okay, so going to go through um, my friend Eric's uh, interview when Jessica put some questions together for him. Um, and let's hear what he has to say about Fritz Honka. So, we ask him when and where did you first learn about Fritz Honka? Funnily enough, it was my friend from Ireland, who is me, that I first learned <laughs> about Honka, which is fucking crazy. Like, you know, weird. Um, is it a part of German culture, like an impact he made, that people, media, still make references about him? Could be in talk shows, movies, series, etc. No, he is not part of our culture. It's not a nice subject. We can't show. We can't show it in German TV, or as a series. It was more other European countries that talk about it, and sometimes we get to see those in art programs, but from France, etc. So I said, or Jessica said, sorry. I imagine the bar is still relevant. Is it considered something more of an iconic place or you think is more of a morbid horror serial killer fans that want to visit it? Eric said, mainly tourists. The bar still sells merchandise from Honka, but it is more aimed at the morbid horror serial killer fans. Yeah, I think I saw in a documentary that they put like this little, this banner that it says like Honka Salon or something like that. I know. <laughs> okay, next question is, I'm not familiar with the book, but I still hear his name being brought up. Oh yeah, we haven't actually mentioned that, that it is, the Golden Glove is based on a book. I think the guy's called Heinz Strunk. Mm -hmm. uh, fabulous, fabulous name there, Heinz Strunk. It's a great name mm -hmm. but yeah so the book is called the golden hand shoe and the golden hand shoe is the name of the pub as well so oh sorry i i, I, I just read about I, the book yeah sorry <laughs> fuck's sake guy right sorry my bad there <laughs> the book by heinz strunk see i was right you Right, the book by Heinz Strunk, in which the movie was based on, won some literature prizes. Is it a big deal in the country, or do you think that the case has gained at some popularity again with so many people into true crime nowadays? I am not familiar with the book, 
but I still hear his name being brought up in true crime podcasts or in documentaries. I have a friend at work who does nothing but listen to true crime, but apart from that, that is all I'm aware of. As far as I know, the book can still be bought in almost every bookstore here in Germany. Uh, Jessica wrote, Did you see any news or how people reacted when they said that they were going to be making a movie about this case? And Eric said, The movie gained more of a following in other countries. Um, I was unaware that there was a book and a movie in the works. I first learnt about the movie here in Ireland. And Jessica wrote, uh, Did Jonas Jonas Dassler, who plays Fritz Honka, drag some attention for his role? Um, In the States was a huge deal when Zac Efron was cast as Ted Bundy. So I'm curious, has something similar happened there with the movie premiering at the 69th Berlin International Film Festival? And Eric wrote, and I get a wee mention here, I only learnt the movie not so long ago from Mr. Movie Hooker. That's me in Ireland. (laughs) I am not into social media or anything like that, so I would imagine if I was, I would have heard more. It is also a very artistic movie and those types of films are not very popular. I'm guessing no one would want to play this in theatres or on TV because they would be scared of the backlash because of its morbid and very graphically violent content. And Jessica wrote... I feel like I'm in a game show. Jessica wrote... um, (laughs) have, Have you seen the movie? And what do you think about it? Do you think it fairly portrays what you... what what we all know about the case? And Eric wrote, It comes very close to the book, and Jonas Dassler done a really, really great and terrifying job. I had not heard of him before, but I will never forget him now. It was a really sad look at how normal people became after the Second World War. The depression, the prostitution, the drinking. There were also no jobs for everyone. It was also a very unsettling and uncertain time here in Germany. Jessica wrote, what are your thoughts about all of this? The case, people making the book, movie, songs. The movie in particular was hard to watch. It was very unsettling, but stayed true to what I remembered about Honka himself. He looked like he was in a car crash and also had a very rough upbringing. Like like Gary, Illinois oh, mentioned, I believe this man was very sick and not your typical serial killer who killed for pleasure. And then Jessica says, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. If, you can, if you're listening to this, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we are going to go with the same questions I did uh, to Kevin. And same questions, yeah. same questions, different German. <laughs> exactly. Um <laughs> He's a little bit more um, in social media, so yeah, his answers are are different. Um, well, thank you, Kevin. I know that this was hard for you, so I I'm really, really, really thankful for your time. So, okay, I'm I'm going to read this more like a statement instead of just you know replying to the same questions I uh, I made. Kevin says that the first time that he got to know about um, the case in general um, was through the trailer of the film. I only looked into it further after it was announced that the film was based on a true story. I always like to compare how true the film is to reality. Um, I personally don't believe that... uh, Fritz Honka is part of German culture. It's more of a city thing that he was the Jack the Ripper of Hamburg, which some people say he was. Many people only became aware of him because of the film, but I couldn't I couldn't say it exactly. Um, this is important um, that I forgot to mention. He actually, <laughs> in one of his depositions, when when uh, at the beginning. Uh, he said he did that, then he denied everything, his confession, and then he says that Jack the Ripper was sending him message to kill this woman. So, yeah, that is just 
fucking crazy. Jack the Ripper so. appeared to him and spoke German to him. Yes, and told him to kill <laughs> exactly <laughs> those women. Yeah. And people started calling him Jack the Ripper of Germany, of Germany. So that is just, you know, I don't know if he wanted that, but he got it. So he, then Kevin gives us a, a little lesson here for history. He says that the book was founded and named in 1953 by the boxer Herbert Nuremberg, who had won the European Boxing Championships in 1937 and 1939 in the lightweight category, the Golden Gloves. Today, the pub is run by the founder's grandchildren. It is still well frequented and only closes for two hours a day, from <laughs> 4 to 6 p.m. The pub will is, uh, still have regulars and the film has certainly made it more popular. I think a lot of film fans go there. Hmm? Now we know. Well, it, it, okay, if film fans go there, then I, I suppose I should go. Like you know, mm-hmm. as a as a film fan, I'll go. Not as a morbid fucking serial killer fan. Film yeah. fan. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's interesting. Like uh, I didn't know why it was the Golden Gloves. Now we know about the Golden. Now Gloves. we know why it's the Golden Gloves. That is a, actually fucking. Thanks, Kev. Um, that is an awesome answer by the way yep thank you yeah, that's that's a very very interesting fact um i asked about some songs that were um based on the honka thing and supposedly they were very popular he says that he haven't heard of any of them he doesn't know about the songs and about the book uh, he says that he can say anything about that because he ha- he has never read the book to his shame. No, don't be ashamed. <laughs> I mean, don't be ashamed. Um, then uh, when I ask about, you know, the reaction of people, because, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in those things. Uh, he said that friends, uh, some of his friends didn't know the story themselves, but... Uh, they told him, man, there's a really heavy film about a mass murder from the drinking scene in Hamburg. And many of them also thought that it was just about the pub and the people who were there. Then when they saw the trailer, it took their breath away. So I guess they, they, they really didn't know about this serial killer, you know? It seems like that. Yeah. Okay about Jonas Dazzlers. Uh, he said that he hadn't heard of him as an actor before the film, but that could also be because he personally don't like watching German films because most of them are just bad. <laughs> uh, there's some amazing, that... Kev, there's some amazing German films. Now. Come on. <laughs> and uh, Jonas Dazzlers acting performance was brilliant. Um, I don't think you have ever seen anything like that in a German film before. Absolute masterly performance. I agree with you. He was amazing. Totally. He's amazing. Um, what he thinks about, you know, oof, the, the, the film. Uh, he says that the whole film is a masterpiece for him, personally. Very authentic. Uh... Fate, Akin must have done some really good research. I have watched many documentaries and pictures. He copied Honkan's flat one-to-one with all the pictures on the wall, etc. Yes, this is what we said at the beginning. It really looks like Honkan's flat. 100%. Mm. I asked him because um, when you start watching the movie, you you are going to be listening to certain songs that uh, I really just want to make sure that it it, it will actually captures that 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 take it that that era yeah. because they sound like like kind of trying to be happy so- songs but at the same time with some of, of, of the 
sadness, nostalgia. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of hopeless and with hope at the same time. So I, I was just really wanting to know. Hopelessly and hopeful. I asked, yes. And I asked him about the Ost, the, the, the original soundtrack uh, of this movie that he took, if he was thinking that, um, I mean, those songs uh, were about, you know, that era. And he said that the soundtrack fits very well. This kind of music was often played in pubs. Even today, you can sing along very well when you are drunk. Very good choice. It's just a pity that many old traditional pubs, pubs are closing down. They can keep up with the newfangled bars. So, well, now we know. We, we just got a, a little bit of taste of those yes. traditional pubs. Thank you. And... The last question that I, I made about, you know, his final thoughts about everything. Um, he says, the case is really hard when you think about how sad and terrible it all was. Sad in the sense that four women could just disappear without anyone missing them. No family, no friends. There was not even a missing person report. Who knows how long this would have gone if there wasn't have a fire. The film is, as I said, a masterpiece. Thank you so much, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. So, yeah, I want to go back to Jonas Dassler here a little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. imagine, you know, getting approached by Fatih Akin, the director, and says, listen, you're getting the leading role in my new movie about a serial killer. And he's absolutely delighted no no doubt about it and then he goes home to his mum and his dad and goes well i finally done it mum and dad i um i got a leading role in the movie who are you playing uh you know that'd be a, a really awkward conversation do you know it is such mm. like what i'm trying to say is that it is such a fucking daring role for a first like a first feature performance and like you 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 will you will not see anything like it ever again in the sense of like this guy just channeled this guy so well or they channeled this uh characterization of this guy so well and played it to absolute hideous perfection and oh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. i agree i agree with those statements um I mean, the film alone, just for his performance, is just a must-watch. Um, especially if you are into true crime and, and, and as many of us that we like comparing things, you know, the, the, the films and, and what we know about the, the true story. Um, and not with, uh, with a morbid sense. We No, no, no. Um, we like seeing that they portrayed fear, in this case, the victims in all, all, all the movies. And yeah, I mean, especially the, the whole thing that we just talk about, you know, making them like rock stars or so. Oh, no, please. That is. Producers, directors, writers, stop doing that, please. Motherfuckers. The, the, glorifying, glorifying them. Just, just stop doing that. This is and that crazy woman. Stop just... fucking marrying crazy women. Stop going to fucking jails and marrying serial killers as well. You fucking idiots. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, did okay. This movie has some flaws. Uh, like everything, we are not perfect. Obviously, movies are not perfect. Uh, in the sense of talking about the movie. No, not about talking about the case. Yeah, the movie in, in itself, it has some flaws. But what we are really applauding here, here is that in no way they are glorifying this dude. They are not glorifying this monster. He was a monster. So you got a monster. You are not trying to make him good like your good neighbor or, or this handsome dude even if you're cool or that he was just you know this charismatic dude that will get all the girls 
not, not even putting him in a position of power because he was in a position of power with this poor woman that didn't have any job, any any other way of, of getting money. They he didn't even put them in 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 a position they will be you know looked down in that way. So thank you, Pati, for that. That was amazing. I wish um, all serial killers were portrayed in that way. Hundred um, percent. Uh, yeah, definitely. Listen, uh, maybe mention his like you know as Jessica says he's made some interesting movies. Um, you're just going to mm-hmm. have to go and look them up yourself because I don't have it here in front of me. But he does have a couple of yeah really really good ones, and I was like oh shit. Um, I remember that one. I think it's called Into the Wave. I'm not too sure. Uh, mm, but yeah, it's, it's very good. And he's also mm-hmm. got a new one coming out. I'm not sure of the name, but it's going to be uh, another uh, German production. And it is about a hip hop. It's a true story about some hip hop artist who is some crime. Gets involved. He's an entrepreneur and involved in crime. So it's like a true story of some famous German hip hop artist. So. If you're from Germany, look out for it. Yeah, he yeah. Well, in the fade he is is before ah, this. That's what before it is. The into the f- in the fade. In the fade, in the, in not the fade. F- into the wave. What the fuck did I say? Completely <laughs> wrong. <laughs> well, drop the mic. Bef- okay, sorry. Everything okay? Yeah, it's all right. Nice. <laughs> Just uh, drop it. <laughs> well, well, and and before in, in the fade, uh, he, well, he has not, it, this one I I haven't seen, but the cut, the cut is is a good one. So he really likes making some sort of political films, and and you know, as he said in interviews, he 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 likes provoking people in a way, and I I understand. I mean, this this film in a way is provoking. I mean, uh. German journalists were outraged <laughs> because it, they, they they thought that it was just you know put it in, in exaggerated just because of you know the morbid thing. But I understand his point of view. I understand why he did it in that way. And yeah, as as we mentioned, is is the right way to do it. To be honest, I mean. Serial killers are monsters, are, 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 are not humans in a way that you and I understand humanity. And that lack of sense of empathy, love, or uh, so many <laughs> different um, feelings, um, you you can put in that. I understand that you, if you are putting a sociopath, that you you are, they are charismatic and everything, but to just put like love stories with them and and different point of views. I mean, we have mentioned Ted Bundy a lot because I think that's 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 one of arguably one of the most uh, portrayed serial killers in 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 cinema. And we, we have had, like, point of view of everybody. I mean, what's next? Uh, the point of view of, of a dog that crossed path with him? Because at, at this point, it's just fucking ridiculous. The, the last movie with Zac Efron was from the point of view of, of his former wife or kind of wife. And, of course, all the movie you're going to see him with these hard eyes and how amazing he is and, you know, that he's not a monster. And give me a break. He was a fucking monster. Like, mm-hmm. For real. And, yeah, so, oh, please, just just stop with that nonsense. Ugh. So, thank you, Fatih. I, again, thank you. Yep. <laughs> Bravo. So yeah, um, it's just I mean, uh, closing up all this. Um, I think it's very different how it's perceived in, in Germany because of the documentaries that I have seen from from America. 
uh, talking about Fritz Honka. They talk in a way more open and more, you know, all these things. And it seems like in his own country, it's not something you want to talk about. It's not something people want to see. I mean, it's just like uh, in this, you know, in, in, in that moment is, oh, okay, yeah, it, it's popular because they are making a movie about it. But that's all. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know... A Netflix like, multi fucking five film deal with Netflix, with, with a documentary yeah, then it, followed by an animated series. <laughs> yes, because I mean we keep talking about the Zodiac, we we keep talking, you know, about the the Black Dahlia. We keep talking about all these cases over and over and over again, and pretty much we are going to die, and people will will keep talking about it you know uh, it's just the fascination with them is, is it's hard to understand <laughs> it's hard to understand for me um, and I found really interesting how, how in this specific case Germany how they approach this very delicate um, subject because yeah I mean uh, the director faced a lot of backlash because of the film he faced a, a lot of that because they thought that it was morbid and he it was just this and that and he's not even one <laughs> ten percent as graphic as, as some of the movies here about serial killers uh, so yeah, I'm. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I'm still trying to process how different the culture is. Very, very different. No, I totally agree. Definitely, but to say like, uh, that is that is well, no, that is the Golden Glove, uh, and that mm-hmm. is our first fucking full episode oh my god we're going for like a uh, over an hour and a half anyway that's good fucking going so if he's made it through all this here congratulations you know uh we already have our next like three episodes planned you know we're going to be taking a look at uh, different cases uh which have been turned into movies or tv shows and talking about them individually each bit of them um if there's anything that you would like us to cover, any case that's been, you know, adapted into anything, then let us know. Uh, we will see. And if it's shite, then we're not going to do it. But anyway, <laughs> thank <you>. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, everybody, for listening. And, um, yeah, we will see you all again soon. Cheers. Say bye-bye. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.